The Kraft Food Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Hell yeah. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine. Every day, millions of women all over America serve parquet margarine because it tastes so good. To market, to market, to get some parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You like it, you love it, like millions who say their favorite margarine is... P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine, made by Kraft. <laughs> Well, let's see what's going on in Summerfield. It's Saturday noon, and the great Gildersleeve is walking home from the office, happy in the thought of a quiet, restful weekend ahead. Contented, dee 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 dee, I'm contented, dee 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 dee. And at the same moment, in Peavy's drugstore, two of Gildersleeve's friends are deep in conversation, their heads close together. That's right, Peavy, and she's coming in on the 12.40 train. Well, you don't say, Jane. <laughs> I got a wire last night to get her house all ready for her. And she's leaving Ransom's cousin, huh? Yep. She's from the same town, Savannah. Her name is Adeline Devereaux Fairchild. Pretty name, isn't it? Yes, it does have sort of a ring to it. <laughs> Guess that's because she's a southern belle. <laughs> Now, I think... Ring, bell, that was a little witticism, Judge. Yes, yes, I know. Now, I'm meeting Miss Fairchild at the train in just a little while. Ring, bell, I thought that was rather humorous myself. (laughs) Peavy, I'm trying to explain something to you. All right. Now, I prefer that you say nothing of this to Gildy. If he knew that I were meeting this attractive young lady, he'd be right down there trying to butt in. You know how excited he gets whenever a new woman comes to town. Yes, it does make him a little frisky. (laughs) And he'll find out about her soon enough. After all, she's moving in right next door to him. Mm, That should be very interesting. So let's keep this a secret from Gilby. Don't forget, Petey. Mum's the word. How's that? Mum's the word. That's what I thought you said. (laughs) After all, she's my client and... Here he comes now. Well, 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 if it isn't our old friend Gilday. Uh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> What's the matter with you two? What? What are you looking so guilty about? All this whispering when I came in. Whispering? There's something funny going on around here. I haven't noticed anything funny. Have you, Peavy? Well, when I said ring, bell, I thought that was rather funny. <laughs> What's that? Look, what were you two talking about when I came in? Just a little private matter, Gilda. Thing you wouldn't be interested in. Would he, Peavy? Well, I wouldn't say that. (laughs) What's that? (laughs) Well, see you later, gentlemen. Good day. Peavy, what... If you'll excuse me, Mr. Gildersleeve, I have to sweep out your back room. Just a minute. I want to talk to you. Uh, Well, uh... Peavy, I smell something fishy around here. You do? Well, it could be the cod liver oil. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I... Now, don't you run away. You're not fooling me, Peavy. You and the judge were talking about me, weren't you? You two old coots. Well, I don't care what you were saying about me. Doesn't worry me. Don't tell me. You can just keep it to yourself. All right. No, you won't. You'll tell me. <laughs> well... When I came in here, the judge was telling you something, wasn't he? Yes. And it was about me, wasn't it? Yes. Well, what did he say to you? Well, he... You really want to know? Yes. What did the judge say? He said, Mum's the word. (laughs) Oh, what's the use? I'm going home. That's right, Miss Marjorie. I was out on the front porch shaking out the dust mop, and I heard the judge talking to the mailman. She's moving in today. 
Well, we might as well face it. I guess Unky's headed for a new romance. Yeah, here we go again. Hello. Leroy. What? Shh, don't tell Unky we were talking about this. Hello, everybody. What's going on here? Hello, Uncle Mort. Hello, Miss Gilsley. Hi, Aunt. <laughs> what are you all whispering about? Whispering? What's the matter with everybody today? What's going on behind my back? Well, uh, see you later, Uncle. I've got to wash out my stockings. Hey, yeah, I'll see you later, too, Uncle. i got some homework to do. Well, better get out in the kitchen. Uh, just a minute, all of you. You're keeping something for me. Now, what is it? Birdie? Well, I guess you're bound to find out sooner or later. Find out about what, Birdie? Well, I was out on the front porch shaking out the dust mop, and I heard him talking. You heard him talking? But I wasn't eavesdropping, Miss Gilsleeve. I just happened to hear him talking. I wasn't eavesdropping. I didn't say you were, Bertie. Who was talking? Well, I was just out there shaking the dust mop. I wasn't eavesdropping. Bertie, <laughs> I didn't accuse you of eavesdropping. Well, I wasn't. All right. <laughs> but what did you hear? Well, I wasn't eavesdropping, but I heard the judge tell the mailman that Miss Adeline Fairchild is going to move in next door. Who's Miss Adeline Fairchild? Brace yourself, Anki. She's Leela Ransom's cousin. What? Yeah, she's moving in today. Leela's cousin moving in next door? Now, don't get excited, Anki. Why don't you sit down for a minute? Huh? You look a little pale. Want me to get you a glass of water? What's the matter with you two? I'm all right. Are you sure, Anki? Of course I am. Well, that's what all the shooting is about, eh? TV and the judge. Everybody acts like all I ever think about is women. I've got other things on my mind, too. <laughs> Leroy! <laughs> this whole thing is ridiculous. Just because some woman moves in next door? Well, I just hope you'll be a little careful, Anki. You know what a time you went through when Leela lived over there? You children may not know it, but your old uncle is a changed man. I'll admit that I have sometimes loved not wisely, but too well. But that's all over now. This new neighbor means nothing to me. Nothing whatsoever. Hey, there she is! Huh? Where? I see her out the window there. I'm oh, so I can't see. She's getting out of the judge's car. Uncle Mord, I thought you weren't interested. Well, just natural curiosity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Look at the judge. Taking her by the arm. The old goat, that silly grin on his face. <laughs> Hey, she's pretty neat, all right. Yeah, she's rather attractive. Mm, nice figure, too. Yeah, not bad. Fur neck piece and a parasol. <laughs> she looks quite a bit like Leela. Walks like her, too. Yeah, I guess all southern women walk like that. <laughs> mm. <laughs> she is kind of cute at that. Nice smile, too. Leela used to smile that way. <laughs> Unky, you're weakening. Huh? You might as well go over and meet her now and get it over with. Well, I guess it wouldn't hurt just to drop over for a minute and act neighbor. No, I won't go. That's the way it started with Leela. But I've learned my lesson. No woman is ever going to make a fool of me again. <laughs> Yes, my dear. What are you doing locked in your room? Just thinking. Are you going to stay there all afternoon? I don't know. You roll along, my dear. I'll be down in a little while. All right. Adeline Fairchild. Nice name. Funny how much she looks like Leela. Same come-hither look. Guess it runs in the family. Uh, Leela... To me, of love. Leela, you almost broke my heart, but I'll never forget you. Still got all your little letters here in this cigar box. Rose-colored envelopes. And your perfume. What's this cigar doing in here? <laughs> Let me see. Here's one of her letters. My darling Throckmorton. I think you are the most wonderful man in the entire world. One thing I love about you is you're so understanding. 
she was sweet. So I know you'll understand if I break our date tomorrow night so I can go out with Dr. Hargrave. Oh, she was fickle. <laughs> I don't know why I keep these letters. And her cousin's probably just like her. Women. They're nothing but trouble. <laughs> They're awfully nice to have around sometimes. <laughs> You never know what they're going to do next. But they're fun to cuddle up to on a sofa. What's a man going to do? We can't live with them. We can't live without them. Zoof, we're trapped. <laughs> More from the great Gildersleeve in just a minute. You know, our friend Bertie is considered a pretty hard gal with a dime. Nowadays, you got to squeeze them to keep them. Is that why you buy parquet margarine, Bertie? Oh, that's only part of it, Mr. Wall. Mostly I buy parquet because it tastes so good. The fact that parquet costs less today than it did a year ago doesn't make you mad, though. No, sir, sure don't. Still, the important thing is that delicious parquet flavor. Why, millions of families know that tasty parquet margarine is the perfect topping for rolls, muffins, pancakes, and waffles, as well as bread. Can't be beat for cooking or seasoning either. Right. Parquet is a craft product, and craft means quality. Parquet is made from only carefully selected farm products, and each tempting wholesome pound is fortified with 15,000 units of essential vitamin A. Got to have them vitamin A's. Yes, ma'am. Parquet has got everything. It tops for flavor, it saves you money, it gives you the kind of nourishment you need. Parquet margarine is a better buy for both bread and budget. And remember, millions of women all over America serve parquet margarine just because it tastes so good. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine made by Kraft. And now back to the great Gildersleeve. The great man has spent the afternoon wrestling with his conscience. It was a hard fight, but he's finally won the decision. He's going to forget all about women. Some men join the Foreign Legion to forget. Some men go to sea. And some men get a haircut. Well, if it ain't to commit. Hello, Floyd. Hop right in the chair, no waiting. Business is Russian. Russian by. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Comfortable? Yeah, this is nice. Very relaxing. Sure. Nothing like sitting in a barber chair to make a man forget his troubles. That's right. How do you want your hair cut today? Southern style? What's that? Nothing to me. Nothing. <laughs> Sit back, relax. Way down upon the Swanee River. Lloyd. I love them old southern tunes. And them southern dames ain't bad, huh, Commission? <laughs> Floyd, I can get along without your heavy-handed humor. It's because Leela's cousin moved next door to me. Oh, she did? As if you didn't know. I'll tell you one thing, Floyd. I'm not the least bit interested in Miss Fairchild. Not one least bit. Sure, Commissioner. I've given the matter a lot of thought, Floyd, and I've come to the conclusion that women aren't everything. Sure. You just got to make up your mind not to let women bother you, that's all. i got to hand it to you, Commissioner. That takes willpower, all right. Well, not so much. Just a minute while I turn the chair around. There. Hey, how do you like my new calendar? Huh? On the wall up there. The Tiger Root Shampoo Man left it. Oh, oh yeah. It's a pip, ain't it? <laughs> Dame for every month. Classy, huh? Well... Look at Miss February in that ski suit. How'd you like to go skiing with her? <laughs> you ain't seen nothing. Well, where are you going? I want to show you the rest of the girls. But I don't want to see them. Now, here's Miss March on a windy day. Floyd, <laughs> put that thing away. <laughs> What's the matter, Commish? Names don't bother you. You got willpower. Well, of course I have. Now, here's Miss April. Cute, huh? Eef. And here's Miss May in a little tennis outfit. Eef. Hey, Commish, where are you going? I'm getting out of here. I'll get my hair cut some other time. Don't you want to see Miss July? 
On the beach? No, thanks. See you later, Ah, This is the way to spend an evening, all right. Sitting by the fire, comfortable chair, reading a good book. Who wants to be out chasing around? Just give me a fireplace and a good book. And seem to get comfortable. What's that? Hmm. Fairchild's playing the piano over there. <laughs> she plays worse than Leela did. <laughs> How can I read my book when she... Can't give you anything but love. Oh, she's playing that for my benefit. It won't do her any good. I'll just read my book. She can play all night for all... Huh? She stopped. Wonder why she did that. Maybe she's going out with somebody. Might just look out the window and see who she's with. Hmm, window's all frosted. Can't see a thing. There. Don't see her. Maybe if I lean out a little... Mustn't let her see me. Cold out here. Is that you, Mr. Gildersleeve? What? Oh, hello. I thought that was you peeking out. I was peeking at you, too. (laughs) (laughs) Just stuck my head out to see if it was snowing. (laughs) Oh, mercy me. I shouldn't even be talking to you. Huh? Well, you're a total stranger. Well, uh... From a girl doesn't talk to a man unless they've been formally introduced. You know the men are so bold. Oh, uh, well, I'm sorry. May so... I present myself? I'm Miss Adeline Devereux Fairchild. Oh, well, I'm Brockmorton. I don't mind my standing on ceremony this way. <laughs> I guess I'm just a teeny weeny bit conventional. Yeah, I'm Throckmorton P. Gillisleeve. <laughs> well, it's a little chilly out here. Nice to have met you. Well, better get back to my book. Oh, you're reading a book? Yes, I... I knew it. The minute I laid eyes on you, I knew you were the intellectual type. <laughs> that high forehead gave you weight. Yeah, oh, it did? I just know you're something awful brainy, like a college professor or a bank teller. Well, not exactly. I'm the water commissioner here. <laughs> you are? That's wonderful. Oh, it's just a job. <laughs> well, lucky little me. The water commissioner is just the man I'm looking for. Yes. There's a leaky water faucet in my kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's simply driving me out of my wit. Drip, drip, drip. Well, a thing like that isn't exactly in my line. A water commissioner and you can't fix a tiny little drip? <laughs> Why, just an ordinary plumber can do that. Well, I can fix it all right, oh, but... Oh, thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. You're so kind. But... You have my everlasting... Gratitude. But I'll leave the front door open. You heard it now, you hear? But... <laughs> <laughs> <Ruining my nails. laughs> there. All it needed was a new washer. You men are so clever about these things. I never would have thought of that. Well, it's all fixed. Just like my grandmother Devereaux always used to say, there's one thing a woman needs around the house, and that's a man. Yeah, well, better be going. Good night. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes? I don't want to impose, but as long as you're here, I wonder if you'd mind putting in some light bulbs for me. Well, I really should be going. I do it myself, but it's, it's too high for little me to reach, and every time I stand on a chair, it makes me so dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> Dizzy, yeah. Now, now, just you follow me. We'll start out here in the hall. Oh, my goodness. There. That's the last ball, isn't it? Yes, that's all. Be careful getting off that chair now. Uh, you want to take my hand? Take your hand? Yes. Here. There. My, 
My hand feels so small when you hold it in yours. Uh, excuse me. Oh, better be going. Oh, you poor man. You must be completely worn out climbing up and down. Why don't you sit down and rest a while? Well, I really ought to be getting back to my book. Just for a minute? Well, maybe just for a minute. I am a little tired. Of course you are. Why don't you take this easy chair? <laughs> Here, let me put this pillow back of your weary head. There. Comfortable? Yeah, I'm fine. I'll just sit on the sofa. Um, were you planning to stay here in Summerfield very long, Miss Fairchild? Well, that depends on whether our form any strong attachments here. Oh, well, well, better be going. Don't rush off. Don't rush off. Huh? Uh, you know, Mr. Gildersleeve, I feel just like I've known you all my life. Cousin Leela's told me so much about you. Oh, uh, she did? Now, fess up now. You were pretty sweet on her, weren't you? Well, I saw her now and then. Well, I don't like to say this about my own flesh and blood, but I don't think Cousin Leela was very nice to you. Well... I always say, let bygones be bygones. Well, that's because you're such a big person. Well, I'm going on a diet. Oh. <laughs> I didn't get it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Her being so fickle and then trying to make up to you with all that sweet talk and flattery. She should have known that someone like you is too intelligent to be flattered. A man with a high forehead. Well, I'm no Professor Einstein. <laughs> when were you born, Mr. Gildersleeve? Born? Hmm. And, oh, October 22nd. I thought so. You're a Scorpio. A Hoopio? <laughs> a Scorpio, I am? Yes, you have all the Scorpio qualities, all right. You're strong, dynamic, and you're a leader of men. Well, I never thought of myself that way, but I see what you mean. <laughs> and Leela told me something else about you, too. What was that? She said you were a gorgeous singer. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I'd just love to hear you sing something. <laughs> well... <laughs> oh, but I won't keep you. I know you're in a hurry to get back. Well, one chorus won't take very long. <laughs> Can you play Speak to Me of Love? Oh, but, Mr. Gildersleeve, I thought that song was sacred to you and Leela. No. <laughs> well, all right then. <laughs> natural talent. No training. <laughs> no, Mr. Gildersleeve, you've carried me away on the wings of song. I'm going to have to sit here on the sofa till I float down to earth. Oh, mind if I sit there too and float down with you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is nice here on the sofa. I'm not crowding you, am I? Well, <laughs> no, I guess not. <laughs> A lovely dress you're wearing. Thank you, sir. Just an old organ gown. Aren't your shoulders a little chilly? Mind if I just put my arm around you? Now, Mr. Gildersleeve. It, what's the matter? Cousin Leela warned me about you. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, don't believe everything you hear. <laughs> now, you just lean right back and behave yourself, you hear? Oh, come on. One little kiss never hurt anybody. Please, Mr. Gildersleeve. What? Sometimes one little kiss can lead to a broken heart. Oh, you're kidding. No, I'm not. That's why I left Savannah, to escape the memory of a romance that flowered and died. I didn't know a man could be so mean and cruel. 
Of course, he was a Sagittarius. You see, oh, Sagittarius. Well, I'm sorry. Yes, Cecil and I were engaged for 15 years. Oh. <laughs> of course, I was just a young girl when I first met him. Oh, naturally. So, here I am in this big house, lonesome little me. Well, don't worry. You won't be lonesome anymore. I'm right next door, you know. Oh, thank you. You're so understanding. I had a feeling I could depend on you. You bet you can. Now, you just put your head on my shoulder and tell old Uncle Throckmorton all about it. Are you sure you don't want to get back to your book now? No. <laughs> Who wants to read a book? What the heck? <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Check your next shopping list, lady. Have you remembered parquet margarine? It's the better buy for both bread and budget. Delicious parquet margarine, the margarine of craft quality, is made from only the finest products of American farms. It's smooth, delightfully tasty. Each rich, nourishing pound contains 15,000 units of essential vitamin A. Parquet is the better buy for your budget. Parquet, a favorite spread for America's bread, actually costs less today than it did a year ago. Actually costs less than a year ago. Treat your family to this perfect spread for rolls, muffins, pancakes, and waffles. Millions of families all over America use Parquet margarine because it tastes so good. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet margarine, made by Kraft. <laughs> Dear Diary, tonight I met Adeline Devereaux Fairchild. I know I swore off women, dear Diary, but Adeline is different. <laughs> she told me all about her unhappy romance with Cecil. He was a cad. Of course, he was a Sagittarius. <laughs> She's just a helpless little girl, and she needs someone to protect her. Well... She'll be safe with me. <laughs> Tomorrow night, we're going to the movies. Wonder if she'll let me kiss her. <laughs> Women are wonderful. Good night, dear diary. Good night, folks. <laughs> <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry, Adeline Fairchild by Miss Una Merkel. The show was written by Gene Stone and Jack Robinson with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Louise Erickson, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Wall saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Tomorrow night, Charles Boyer will be Al Jolson's guest on the Kraft Music Hall, heard over most of these NBC stations. Don't miss it. Remember, tomorrow night, mm -hmm. for exact time, see your local paper. And be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Good night. Here's a suggestion for quick, easy Lenten lunches. It's macaroni and cheese made the modern way with Kraft Dinner. Each package of Kraft Dinner contains enough quick-cooking macaroni and golden Kraft grated to make four generous servings of macaroni and cheese. Fluffy light macaroni with grand cheddar cheese flavor in every tempting forkful. What's more, it takes only seven minutes cooking time. Your family will like this marvelous macaroni and cheese so well that it's a good idea to have several packages of Kraft Dinner on hand so you can serve it often. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.